everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Anna, I am a portrait photographer in the Chicagoland area, and today we're going to be talking about my Poison Ivy cosplay photo shoot. Poison Ivy is another character that I wanted to do, especially because I have red hair, simply because it would be a fun thing to do, and also considering the fact that I've been having a lot of fun doing these Halloween photo shoots, it's been getting me into doing cosplay. When it comes to cosplaying a specific character, you don't necessarily have to go by the book in regards to their specific outfits. I ended up finding a cute bodysuit that ended up looking somewhat like my friend had mentioned, a mix between the modern version and the Uma Thurman version of Poison Ivy, so I just went ahead with it. I figured it would also be appropriate to do the photo shoot outside instead of doing it in the studio simply because the character pertains to a lot of greenery and she loves botanicals and a lot of plants so I figured the best location that I could use is something outdoors. The first time around when we were doing the photo shoot, I ended up actually forgetting my battery for the off-camera flash that I wanted to use that day, so we simply just used the Sony a7 III along with the 85mm lens. I also want to give a really quick shout out to Dennis, he was helping me out with this photo shoot, so a huge thank you to him for helping me out and having to deal with me basically. The first bodysuit that I had didn't necessarily work in my favor. I just didn't like the way that it was going to be looking. It looked more like a boudoir photo shoot than an actual cosplay. So I ended up getting a second bodysuit and I think it worked so much better for the theme that I picked. I did end up finding some dark green tights as well as some leaf garters on Amazon. So I pretty much used those to also accentuate the sort of poison ivy look. I also added some gloves in simply because I didn't have anything to put on my hands and it felt a little awkward not having anything there and have it be really bare. Since we were doing a second round of this photo shoot, I actually brought a battery for the Godox 8200, so I was using that along with an umbrella and a light stand. The first place that I had picked for the photo shoot was a location that I had scouted previously for an engagement shoot. Um, I really liked this area and simply because the lots of greenery and a lot of leaves were in this specific spot, it felt like the perfect setting for me to use. In the second location, I picked something a little bit closer just because I figured since I had all of this equipment with me and I didn't want to have Dennis drive me around everywhere, it felt better to just do something a little bit closer in case I needed to run back and forth and grab a couple other things for this shoot. Once we had gotten a couple photos, it was time to open up Photoshop and begin editing. Once you add your photo into Photoshop, hit Command J and add a new layer. With that layer, you are going to be converting it into a smart object because we want to be using the Liquify tool and Liquify only works when you convert those layers into objects. So once we hit Liquify, you're going to be seeing this screen and essentially what we're going to be doing here is very minimal work. We want to add some volume into the hair so we're going to be doing very small adjustments because if you try to do anything super big you end up getting these pixels which means that it doesn't have enough data to fully transfer into the sort of adjustment that you want so keep in mind that everything that you're doing here is going to be very small and overall you're not going to see much of a difference until you start hitting the preview and toggle between the views to actually see what you're doing so like i had mentioned before i initially in the shoot didn't like the way that my hair was looking. I wanted it to be a little more voluminous. So adding the liquify tool is a great tool to use in order to see the results. So like I mentioned before, toggle between that preview to see your adjustments and hit OK. The great thing about having that new layer is you can also between toggle between that background and the layer on, that you have up on top to see those adjustments that you made. So. After we do that, drag and drop this PNG that I had found online. And the reason I picked this one out of the other ones is because I really liked how all the leaves have different focal points and different uh, 
sort of adjustments and different sizes and things like that. So I wanted to just use this one and basically change the opacity and also duplicate it and have different spots that has a bunch of other leaves around it. Um, you can obviously use the masking tool if you would like, if you want to make sure that some of the leaves are behind, but I wanted to kind of keep it simple and just sort of adjust as needed. So I was sort of just moving things around, seeing exactly how I wanted it, and wanted to make sure that it also stayed balanced. Obviously, you can see that in the center, there's obviously a lot of leaves, and the sides just look a little bit bare on the top left and on the bottom right. So like, like I mentioned before, kind of just adjust as you would like. If you would like to have more leaves in the center, kind of you know, put all the leaves in the center. If you want some just strictly on the corners, just kind of adjust as needed. So that's pretty much what I did. And then from there, you can also flip the, you know, PNG to the other side to sort of invert it and make sure that it's adjusting as needed. So I essentially just did a bunch of that and uh, that's the final result. So the very first tip that I have for you, especially if you are doing cosplay, is to make sure you have all of your equipment. I'm gonna sound like a broken record here, but I sometimes forget bringing batteries and that sometimes can be a little frustrating because you have all of the equipment that you need for that shoot that day and obviously the models or your client is gonna be there and then you missing one thing kind of disrupts the entire shoot in case you have to run and go back to your house and grab it or other things like that. So make sure that you have a mental checklist before you leave the house to make sure that you have everything that you need. Especially if you're doing off-camera flash, it is very important to make sure that you have protective gear. If you are doing something outside, be careful and be in mind that sometimes your equipment can fall over. So make sure that you have some sort of protection or you are aware of having an assistant to make sure that nothing falls or breaks. The second tip that I have for you, especially if you're doing a poison ivy photo shoot, is to make sure that the leaves are actually green. Poison Ivy's character likes to bring plants to life, so that means you're going to need a lot of green in your photo. And the problem with photographing in October is that the leaves are going to start changing, so they're going to be yellow and red. And that's going to be an issue when it comes to photographing Poison Ivy. So one thing that you're going to probably want to do is try to do the shoot as early as you can before the weather starts to change and also it gets colder. I have mad respect for any cosplayer that photographs in colder weather because I was freezing my butt off and I had noticed that it was difficult for me to keep my composure. So if you run into a situation where there is cold weather and your model or your client are going to be cold as well, it's probably a good idea to make sure that they bring sweaters or they bring a lot of layers so that way in between photos they are able to quickly grab something and get a little bit of warmth before your next shoot. I had this idea while I was trying to set up all of the lights and have everything that I had prepared in order for me to get ready. So I had all of my pants and my sweaters on while I was setting everything up. So that way, while I am setting up, I am still warm and I'm comfortable, not freezing cold. Keep in mind also that you could probably do this photo shoot at any time, especially around the summer or the spring when things are starting to be green and lively. This would probably be a better idea than waiting until October. The last tip that I have for you, and I know that I'm going to sound like a broken record again, is to have a lot of fun with it. Dennis and I actually had a couple ideas and we were bouncing off each other on a couple things that we can include in this shoot to add a different element to it. So when Dennis and I were heading towards the location, we are actually brainstorming a couple of things that we can add in regards to props that can add a different type of feel to it. And what I mean by this is Dennis had an idea of getting the Batman mask and almost make it look like Poison Ivy had just killed Batman. And that's not necessarily something that I thought of initially, but I definitely think it was a great addition and also something that I can keep in mind in the future. That's why it's always good to have an assistant or to have someone with you to brainstorm off of because sometimes when you are doing photo shoots by yourself, you don't necessarily have all of your creative juices flowing and you're really trying to be paying attention to the technical standpoint where you can have someone with a different opinion or someone with a different eye that can be able to help you bring that creativity together so you guys can come up with an amazing project. 
But that is all that I have for you guys today, and this is the end of the video. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification button to get notified every single time I post a new video. I do want to give a quick shout out to Dennis. He was an amazing photographer and also a great assistant. So if you are interested in his work, I will put his Instagram in the description box below. Like Poison Ivy Fashion, she loves saving the planet and is an environmentalist. So I'm going to list a couple foundations down below that you can go ahead and donate to if you're interested. If you're interested in videos just like this, I have a playlist created where I try to recreate album covers and movie posters, so that will be listed up here as well as in the description box below. If you're interested in traveling the world with me and seeing what I do in my free time, that will be also listed in the description box below. But that concludes the end of this video. I hope you guys are staying safe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Happy Halloween!